In this video, we're going to provide a debrief for task one of the first sample assessment for cash and financial management. We're told HJ Limited carries out maintenance of farm machinery. It is month two of the financial year. The bank feeds for month two include the transactions shown below. So in part A, we need to identify how each transaction will impact their profit. So the first one then, we have 2,800 VAT return from HMRC. So how, how would we account for that? Well, we're going to receive the money. Remember, all of these things are shown on their bank feeds. So we're going to debit bank with the 2,800, and then we would credit the VAT receivable. So HMRC owe us the money, so that's going to be a receivable. And when they pay us, we will remove the receivable. They owe us no more money. And we can see that that's going to be a, a, an account on the uh, statement of financial position. So that means there's going to be no effect on profit. Next for them, we have 5,150 in dividends to shareholders. So we're, we're paying the money to the shareholders in this case. So we're going to be crediting bank with that. And then we're going to be debiting the dividend. But remember that a dividend does not meet the definition of an expense according to the framework to the International Financial Reporting Standards. So because we're paying this money to the shareholders, to the owners of the business, then this is considered to be an appropriation of the profits rather than an expense that reduces profit. So in this case, again, there's going to be no impact on profit at all. We'd be reducing our retained earnings. So yeah, that debit dividend would create a reduction in the retained earnings. It doesn't affect the profit itself. Next, we have 155 PayPal charges. So again, we're going to be crediting the bank because we're paying PayPal for this. And this is going to be an expense, perhaps some sort of finance expense. So yes, this will reduce our profit. So we're going to have a negative 155 here. And then for the next one, we have 5,600 business rates rebate. So as it's a rebate, it means that we're going to be receiving money. So we're going to debit the bank and then we'd credit the rates. Now, ordinarily, rates would be an expense, so we're going to be showing a negative expense here. So overall, that's going to be increasing our profit by 5,600. We're moving on to the next part of the question. Extracts from the monthly management accounts for HJ Limited show so we've got uh, two months here. We've got revenue, we've got our trade receivables, and we've also got some irrecoverable debts. And we're told to ignore VAT and then all sales are on credit. And it's asking us to calculate the amounts received from the customers in month two. So the way to do this is uh, we can set up a T account. Now you don't have to use a T account. If you prefer to use some sort of table to work this out, that, that would be fine as well. But we're gonna show you the T account. And we're going to show here the receivables ledger control account. So we know that at the end of month two, we have a carried forward balance of uh, 6,310. And at the beginning of month two, or at the end of month one, we have a brought forward balance of 5,800. What else do we know? Well, we're thinking about month two now. So we've got revenue in month two, and that revenue is going to increase our receivables balance. So remember, it says that all sales are made on credit. So all of that revenue can go through to receivables. And what else do we know? There are also some uh, irrecoverable debts written off. So we've got those uh, irrecoverable debts. And that's 345. And that's going to reduce our receivables balance, isn't it? So on that basis then, uh, we can work out our totals. So we have a total of 17,083, and it needs to balance, doesn't it? But we can see that it doesn't balance. Uh, we've got some number here that we need to work out, and that's going to be how much cash we've received 
from the customers to pay off what they owe us. And we can see that we've got a balancing figure here of 10,428. So that's the number that we need to put into our answer. We're going to be using a similar technique for the next part of the question. So below is an extract from the fixed asset register for motor vehicles for HJ Limited. During month two, a new van was purchased for cash and there was no disposal. So again, let's use a T account to help us with this. And we're going to be using our property, plant and equipment T account. So we know that we've got a carrying value at the beginning of month two. So we've got a brought forward balance of 55,200. So that's the figure at the beginning of the month. And then at the end of the month, we'll have a carried forward figure of 79,650. And then we know that in month two, we've got some depreciation. And we know that depreciation is going to be reducing our balance. That's going to be on the credit side. And what we want to know is how much they spent on the new van. So we'll have our additions, which are going to be on the debit side. So we just need to balance off our account, don't we? So on the credit side, we can see that's the, the bigger of the two sides. So that's going to be 81,000 and it needs to balance. So on that basis, we can work out our balancing number, which is going to be 25,800. And so that's going to be our answer. And then finally, for part D of the question, HE Limited has recently revalued its workshop. Identify the effect on cash that the revaluation will have. Well, for a revaluation, all we're doing here is thinking that our workshop has gone up in value, but we don't actually receive any money for that. There's no cash, so there will be no effect on cash. It's just a, a changing the, the number in the accounts, but no money moves.